bought a one-way ticket to get out here to California to save the 310. I sure hope this works because otherwise I don't have a backup plan on how to get home. Pfft, welcome to Jimmy's world. Step one when setting up your hotel room, never leave home without it. Bam, little air purifier, oxygen -er thingy. It's an Eden Pure O3 generator. Do you guys have one? My mom's had one forever and it was this big box thing. She had plates in the back that she had to switch out and all this stuff. Well, with this one, we don't have to switch any plates out. And it plugs into the wall, bam, like that, or USB cord right there for like your car or whatever. Love this thing. I have them in my house all over the place. Since we're in hotel room 310, I've talked to these people and they said because of the Mighty Mouse smell and everything, they wanted to pitch in to help save the 310. So they are offering for a limited time when you go on their website, do a Jimmy's World promo code. The description will be on the screen now and in the link below. They'll give you $200 off of a pack of three of these plus free shipping. It's crazy and I, I've, I've got them already. Uh, so that worked out really well and it takes care of mighty mouse smells and viruses and all that kind of stuff. And hotel rooms, they all have a funny smell. But you take this bad boy here, bam, done. I love those little things and you should too. Oh, by the way, I sent them some stickers. Save the 310 stickers right here. And not only are you gonna get a discount, but whenever you uh, buy a pack of them, they're gonna put a sticker in there for you because you're helping save the 310. We're in hotel room 310. This is just awesome. So check them out. Promo code Jimmy's World. The information is on the screen and in the description below. All right, boys, I believe we're here. We found Derelict row. Before you look at anything, you gotta get your floppy hat. That's better. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to the Mighty Mouse. In 310, Mighty Mouse. Yeah. How crazy is that? If you don't believe in miracles, you should. Miracles often come in the form of a lot of work, elbow grease, financial stupidity. We're there. This is a miracle. Guy uh, Bob emailed me, said, hey, I've got a way for you to save the 310. May take some imagination, like taking two airplanes and making one, but at the end, you'll have not only the freaking awesomest tail number ever for Mighty Mouse, 310, Mike, Mike, oh, Mighty Mouse, you will have extra parts because we already have a lot of extra parts from the other airplane. So let's take a look to see if this is the miracle that we've all been waiting for. Let's go. The same year, make, model, and everything, 1955 flavor, 310, no number behind it. Same engines, same, it's the exact same airplane. Kind of, most of it. What's here? It needs a little bit of work. It'll be fine. That's a bummer. How did that happen? I don't remember this. When I was walking, walking past. Oh, you know what? I bet somebody got too close with something and kerblam that thing. They might have. Yeah. Okay. That's just fine. We'll leave that. I'm sure it's going to be okay. <laughs> Is this going to be locked up? Ooh, that was... <laughs> oh, there's no compression <laughs> at all in this thing. Nope. Yeah, there's... There's... There's not much compression yeah. in those. But hey, I know where we can get an extra engine. Absolutely. And we know that that one works. So basically what I'm thinking here mm -hmm. is we take the engine and the propellers and all the new hoses and all the new stuff that we bought. If we can get that airplane flying, we take all the seats and everything else out of that, throw, you may have to make two trips, yeah. throw the propellers, engines, all the parts and everything, 
freight them over in that thing. Mm -hmm. And then he's got a hanger here where we can put all that stuff on this, get it all connected and hooked up and whiz bang this sucker. Yeah. I'm, that might be how this goes. Okay. Oh yeah. See some bird action happening right there. Looks like it's got the updated pressure carbs on it. I see orange gasket on part of it. Good. That's good. Oh, mother. Perfect. Sheesh. I thought they said things don't rust in California. They do. Yeah, I'm gonna break that screwdriver off trying this. Oh, okay. We're gonna need some WD-40 on this one. Yeah. Oh, breaking stuff. Oh, wow. Now the dipstick's over here. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. The dipstick's actually right here, but you would be correct. Oil, yummy. Yep, that's super nasty old stuff too. Mm -hmm. And it is filled to the brim of 12. So it might be wise, if it's not really been badly damaged, would be to get gas inside that carburetor as soon as you can and see if the diaphragms will soak. You'll know you were successful if it idles well. Okay. If it doesn't idle well, then no, you need a new diaphragm. Okay. And I've got my pressure carbs too, mm -hmm. the ones we got on the running engines. Yeah. Need to put some air in that tire. This is the aerodynamic STC that they added to get you more speed. Fuel efficient as well. You only burn half the amount of fuel. Okay. Let's see what we got. <sighs> Well, there, hey, this has got slick mags on it. Oh, it does. That's pretty slick. I need these for those Surefly Magnetos that I bought, and I haven't ordered the, um, does that other one? Do you have any idea how awesome that would be if this thing had slick mags on both sides? It does. Hallelujah. That is a major score. This has the ignition harnesses that we need for the Magnetos that I bought. Boom. It's awesome. It's been left exposed like this for, for a minute, you know. Just gonna check the oil. Still got oil in it. About 10 and a half quarts. Stuff like feels uh, a little gritty. Can't really see. Oh, and these are the horrific, evil cables that we had to replace. That is the birth child of somewhere on the sixth level of hell. Oh, yeah, that. Oh, if you ever wanted to see a camshaft, there you go. It's covered in a couple inches of dirt. So, uh,. Definitely gonna need one engine. Mm -hmm. But it's got the slick harnesses. That's a bonus. They look okay, they're usable. Yeah, yeah they're flexible. They're not all ratted out. They'd have to be newer since the, got a little bit of fraying there. Not too bad around there. It's got new oil temp sensor over here, which is nice. They have the same broken wires that I've got on mine. Yeah. That's fantastic. Okay, starter, there's the oil filter adapter. And pull that thing off. This has dry vacuum pump. Mm -hmm. Here's the pressure carb. Oh, those controls are toast. Yeah, they're pretty stiff. 
probably at that end too. Yeah. Okay. Must have been a bit tail heavy. What the heck? Why the heck would there be rocks in there? What critter? What critter would carry rocks? Rock badger. I don't think I've ever even heard of that. No, not really. That is bizarre. What kind of creature would carry rocks like that? Okay, this does have the underwing exhaust. Well, the yeah. other one, this doesn't have any exhaust on it. Yeah. Here. Yeah, the hole's over here. I feel like in the CSI when they pull the sheet over. Oh, yeah. It's kind of what it, what it feels like. Oh yeah, here's the hole over here for this yeah, one. there's one over here too. So other than needing at least one engine, mm -hmm. I would just go ahead and put both props on it while we're got everything here and doing that. Oh, I mean the new ones that you got? Mm -hmm. Bring those out, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you're gonna go through all that effort of doing all this, might as well. Bring the hoses all of our hoses, our wheels and tires, they're donuts. already mounted and everything. Bring the donuts, these are gone. Yeah, we'll bring those with the engine. Yeah. Um, and now that's also assuming that this engine over here works. Now these do have bladders in the tip tanks. I believe they do. On these. And there's no, there wasn't any gas in these, was there? Didn't see any. I need a ladder. I'm a little short. Nothing. You can actually smell the rubber. Yeah, not a sound. Not anything. Okay, so some checks would be to put some fuel in here mm -hmm. to see if it's going to leak. Yeah. And that would tell us if we need to bring my tip tanks as well. Yeah. Just as an assembly, I wouldn't pull the wouldn't pull the bladders out for that. I'd just take the whole thing. Right. Yeah. Unless you they, disturb those guys. They disconnect just yeah. a handful of bolts and stuff there. I think there's two on the spar and one back. Mm-hmm. Plug everybody in and you're all set. Well, let's take a poke around this thing and see what the the, the actual fuselage wings, the structure if this thing will fly again. All righty, let's grab a look. You see these two nuts here? Yeah. This one and this one, and this one and that one, all four. Those are U-bolts. They go to a pin that comes in this way, and another one comes in this way. They have a habit of breaking when these nuts back off, and then the gear folds. Oh, that's good. So you have to be careful about that. All three tens of this year make and model have that. So does the 320, I do believe. Yeah. I think on this one, this one's closer to 20 years sitting here. Oh, really? Uh-huh. Ah, spider webs. And looks like the start went down completely, so the piston part should still be good, hopefully. Chrome should be good. And that would be serial specific. Oh. What was that? Oh, great. Ah. Yeah, always breathe out when you do that. <laughs> Are we also looking for black streaks on the yes, rivets sir. on this one? Yes, sir. Yeah, it's actually pretty clean under here. We're not dumping oil yeah. while it was in service. Well, I was just looking for corrosion type stuff. Yeah. And I'm not finding anything. Oops. Like an old Cadillac, some tucked leather or whatever. Oh, there we go. They're starting to move. Oh, yeah. There we go. <laughs> now they're moving. Oh. oh, there we go. The tail. You can see that moving now. Oh, there we go. Yes, sir, boys. Yeah. Oh, this has the mod where they took all the gauges and moved them around. So they're more traditional to what you would find today. 
and all your radios are in the center and a standard kind of sort of standard six pack configuration there and your engine stuff here yeah it's got a cassette tape player right here our switch is going to move yeah All right, so on this one, barring the obvious with the engine over mm -hmm. there, what what kind of stuff would you think, and barring the obvious of lubing everything up oh, yeah. and doing oh, gear swings and all that stuff, where do you think the potential uh, 7700 code mm -hmm. items would be? I haven't seen anything outstanding. Uh, like you say, once the gear is done and the engine and the known obvious stuff is done. Uh, you'd want to crank it up, make sure all the power instruments work. It'd be nice if the airspeed and stuff worked. It should. You know. Most of that stuff doesn't deteriorate, as you might expect. So yeah, it, it might be, again, save the engine, it might be a little bit easier to get this one going. I think it would be just be, if it's all here and most yeah. of the stuff turns on, honestly. Yep. And a big plus it has is the underwing exhaust, so however long it's had that, that is possible corrosion on the top rear spark cap is not happening. Yep. Without that going over, it's not going to happen. He also mentioned that he has a um, swept tail for this, because I oh, guess really? those are direct bolt-ins. Really? Mm -hmm. From the D model? Yeah, I think so. So this had a handful of the, the goodies on it already. The underwing exhaust, um, the center stack instrument, panel with the whole, all the instruments are all arranged in a much more organized yeah. traditional fashion. Um, had, well, like the heater, I think he said that, that was done not too long ago. Mm -hmm. It's in better condition than the one I pulled out of the barn. Yeah. It's in way better condition. The rear vertical looks like it's bent. Do you see that on the top? On the trailing edge? Yeah. yeah it looks like it got dished in a little. That could be wind damage or something hit it. If you look at the rear spar and the vertical stabilizer down at the bottom, oh yeah, there is a little kink right there that's been stop drilled. Sure enough, not too thrilled about that because of the way it buckled. Yeah, yeah, you got to pinch this way. Yeah. So uh, it looks like it was actually hit from this way yeah. and twisted it that way and buckled it in. No, this side's got a stop drill too, and then it cracked beyond the stop drill, so it's it's still active. So that explains why you got the tail. Mm hmm You might have decided to do that. Oh yeah, the crack keeps going on this side too. You take it up and again, that's just a skin oil canning. Yeah. It's tight. I think that's more of a 400 series thing anyway, really. Yeah. And this is fiberglass and it looks like it's got a little bit of a crack here and there, but surface. Yeah, installing and removing that particular tail cone is a real pain. If yep. you haven't found that out, you will. Yep, and we have one that's not cracked, mm -hmm. so if need be. What would it take to get this sucker flying out of here? Well, the obvious engine, Yeah. Uh, the obvious gear. If you switch out the engines, well, I guess the props will go. And if you're going to do this on a three blade, you're kind of stuck. I wonder how that would handle. Probably sound funny. <laughs> That'd be different. And then see about the tip tanks. And once you get it home, it'd be nice to see what that vertical's doing. In the meantime, don't do any really wild slips. Yeah, yeah, probably not. But yeah, it could go. It could go. You think this one could fly? Mm hmm. And then when we get it home, Look at the tail section, look at the stabilizers, stabilizers in the back. See what it's doing. Yeah. Another couple gallons of lube on this mm -hmm. thing. What do you think? Are we just continuing down this terrible financial catastrophe, one broken airplane at a time? I think it's gonna work. I do indeed. Destiny does not just happen like this. It's destiny, right? November 310, Mike Mike, Mighty Mouse. Huh?
I bet you we'd be on this thing for like probably two weeks, a solid week, maybe two, and then it should be should be good to go. I think this is gonna work. Yeah. Sixty-five four eleven turbocharged five twenties GTSIO three hundred and forty horse engines. Oh, there. That's right. Are they the five twenties or five fifties? You know 520s. which twenties. Five twenties. So they're GTSIO five twenty C. And like I said, three hundred and forty horse. There's nothing wrong with the airplane. It just Let's look this thing over, mm -hmm. and you tell me what it would take for you to fly this all the way back to Florida. At least a case. Well, oh, no. I can, <laughs> I, we can go down and get you a case of Natty Lights. We'll, we we'll take care no, of you. You want that before you hop in and fly it? <laughs> oh, yeah. Look at this. This is shaggerific. Austin Powers level of amazingness. Oh, look. Little concerned by that. That's kind of grossed me out. I wonder what the expiration date is in this. That'll tell you the last time the airplane was used. Expiration date when you're 17 years old. That's what it says. Table. Yes, look at that. <coughs> don't, don't do that. <coughs> oh, oh, crap. <coughs> ah, COVID, a little, uh, little dusty there on that one. You got a table over here. I mean, come on, how awesome is that? He said it has a, um, Oh, what did he call it? Like a refreshment bar or something like that, which is probably back here, I think. And it's got a toilet. Come here and check this out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you definitely need to be skinny back here. Right here. This is what you have to have whenever you're traveling with family is this seat right here, the most valuable seat in the airplane. Oh, it has, yeah. Yeah, a little curtain. little privacy little curtain. curtain. So and you just, don't make eye contact whenever nope. you're doing your business. Just don't look, no. <laughs> and then hopefully the airflow goes backwards. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It should. Yep. And you have your refreshment center back here. Mm -hmm. It's got the wet bar. Yeah. yeah. For cups and stuff up there, I'm guessing. Oh yeah, there you go. Airworthiness certificate and registration for passengers to see upon entry. Yeah, that's a requirement. Oh, that's, that's uh, all kinds of probably shiny stuff up there. Let's go see what's up there. I am shocked. Those controls are fairly smooth. Wow. That is amazing. This is really old. <laughs> Compass still has water in it. Your autopilot. This is the non-pressurized, which means as you go up in altitude, you're at that altitude. So uh, it would have oxygen. Oh, yeah, right here. That's where your little mask and deal comes on. Curtain, kids, shut up! And then you just pull that back. That's probably what would happen. On off. What is that for? Fasten seatbelt? Are you serious? We got a fasten seatbelt sign. Okay. This 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 is pretty awesome. Oh, it pulls out and down. Shut the front door. 
You be rolling. This is fantastic. Full gauges for a co-pilot over there as well. This this is like a legitimate cross-country business level airplane. Yeah, there's a whole lot of stuff in here that I have no idea what any of it is. But it'd be a lot of fun to find out. So when it all goes south, you just grab this sucker and you just start cranking like that and it takes the gears and makes them go down. You gotta turn it like a thousand times. Just <laughs> No way, it's got a prop sink on it. Oh, that is cool. So what this does is you flip this on and it makes your propellers spin at the exact same RPM so that you don't have more power trying to pull you one way or the other on the engines. A lot of the older planes did, didn't have this. That is super cool. Do we think this one is the one that we can get going to get me back to Florida? I mean, honestly, it's in better shape than any of the rest of them that I've came across. It's been sitting for 10 years. How hard could it be? <laughs> right, what could go wrong? This is such a terrible idea. There's another feller you may know that has an airplane similar to this that that one was grounded because of the wing spar. It was some tie thing or something or another. But this airplane is way lower hours and I don't know when that kicks in. We'll find that out. Uh, you, you guys probably know. But this one only has 3,300 hours on the entire airplane, which is pretty amazing. Maybe. You could fit one person if they were. <laughs> Unless they're claustrophobic. <laughs> yeah. <that's... laughs> Leave the door open. Sure. Just... Sure. Yeah, there you go. Spoilers. Speed brakes. Yeah, there you go. Make sure it doesn't even have any noise. Now you hear a little rubbing noise there. Aileron trim cables could be a touch loose, and there's a cable guide. If he's rubbing on that, it doesn't matter. Okay. Make sure no one's damage anything in here. Oh, by the way, while we're at it, when you close the door, you just close it. Here, don't close like that. it with that. When you close that door, be sure to unlatch it first in the middle of the arm, that little trigger. Wait, on the, the stair uh, On stair the upper door? one, yeah. Okay. A lot of people don't know, you have to unlock it first, then bring it down. They just grab and pull like you do this. Oh, yeah, yeah, that little arm there. Yeah, and then yes. it bends over. Yeah, this. And if you can get them, they're pretty expensive. And now if I, like on the 310 of mine, these tip tanks are actually the main tanks. They are the main tanks, yes, sir. And then the wing is the auxiliary actually, tanks. Uh, yeah. which a little is, confusing. Which seems backwards, but that's what, on the 310, that's, that's the way they, they were. Yeah. They're all like that. If they have tip tanks, the tanks are the mains. Yeah, it's just a standard airplane as far as pre-flight goes. So you want to get full travel. You want to see what kind of play you have here. And for something that's been sitting for quite a while, what do you, what do you look at, look for? Well, if it was, if it was up to me to fly the airplane out today, uh, first off, the pre-flight would probably take most of the afternoon. Yeah. And I would just look at any tiny little part that I could get my hands on. Uh, as far as draining the fuel out of the fuel selector. Uh, don't just open it up and let it go. Go and let it go. Maybe put it in a gallon can. Uh, maybe rock it around while you're at it. And there could easily be water in here for moisture accumulation if they're not full. Or if the O-rings leak, that kind of thing. So in this particular airplane, I would probably not use the aux tanks. I wouldn't trust them. The well, we tanks, can open them and see if there's fuel in them. We could. It's easy to do. It might if, be a screwdriver. If they had the fuel in them, though, then and we don't see any leaks, mm -hmm. it'd probably be all right, right? It should be all right. It's as far as I know, aviation fuel doesn't get old and stale like automotive fuel does. Yeah, so, it doesn't have all the corn in it. Nah, there's nobody home. Yeah. Or it's so minimal that it doesn't matter. Okay. So if, if you're gonna take this. Don't use the oxygen. I tanks. would say uh, ex expect to replace the bladders. All right, and those are oh, a nice, easy five grand a pop. Oh, probably, I don't know what yes. they are. It's been too long. Just anything that needs to replace, you just put 5,000 on it. And then add two more zeros. Someone yep. told me that the first time I made a restoration. Take the estimate, double it, add 50%, you're oh, yeah. close. That is. 
The O-ring's there. It's broken. So yeah, I would expect water to be in there. Oh, you can yeah, see where right. it's broken right there. Hmm. Other Hubbard's covered. Dry as bone. Yeah. But these are metal, not bladder. No, they are not bladders. So that's that's okay then. That should be okay. I'd be worried a little bit about corrosion, but other than that, the water's uh, been in there for a length of time. Oh, we forgot to check the O-ring after I actually got it open. <laughs> Yeah, cracked. Yeah. On that one. It looks like he's got the small fuel port, so you can't fill it with Jet A. Oh, is that? Not like that? Not like that. He can run on 100 for a little bit. This can't run on Jet at all. Yeah. Alrighty. We were headed this way. This okay. has the. Sometimes this part back here will crack too. Sometimes people will take the spinner off for maintenance, they'll do the maintenance. They'll change the oil or whatever reason, they're going to start the engine again and leave the spinner off. I'm just going to run it for a little while. We don't need a spinner. These will then fold out this way. Yeah. yeah. Ask me how I know. Ask me how I know. <laughs> <laughs> so you got little cracks here that yeah. need to be dealt with. Okay. Oh, yeah, that doesn't injure anything. There you go. If you could grab that other side, Jimmy would just lift it right straight off in your direction. Got it? Got it. Got it. I've already thought of a name for this engine. I'll call it Dusty. What do you got? So here's the, here's the big nasty Continental. That's Dusty. Here's the gearbox right here. Okay. Oh yeah, you see the where the crank would come out here yeah, and cranks, it gears up out of the bottom at, right here. If you look at the cylinders, you can see the center line of the cylinders walk across the engine that way. That's mm -hmm. where the crank is, about what that far down. Mm -hmm. And this is obviously a lot higher. And there should be some play, but not a lot. Sometimes if you idle these low enough, you can hear the engine rattling. That's the gearbox teeth bouncing against each other. Bring oh, the wow. idle up a little bit. So this, is this the intercooler or the oil? This is an oil cooler. I don't believe we intercooled these. Let me have a look. That's a vacuum pump. The fuel, oh, here's the fuel pump right here. Yeah. And this now that's oil cooler. Oil cooler. There. Yeah, that's oil. I don't believe they intercooled these. Hey, he's got prop accumulators. Cool. <clears throat> what does that do? That stores oil pressure when you feather the prop. Oil is brought out of the hub and into here. That has a pre-charge of like, I don't know what it says, 50, 100 PSI, whatever the placard says. And it pressurizes that <clears> cylinder. <throat> when you want to unfeather, you push the propeller lever forward. A valve opens up in the governor. The pressure that you brought in when you feathered it is now rooted back to the hub and takes you out of feather. Oh, okay. It doesn't do it all the way. So in case this engine dies, mm -hmm. then you would be able to have this oil to go in there, unfeather it to try to get it to spin again. And get it going, yeah. Oh. It's possible to relight without that, but it's tough on the engine unless you know what you're doing. Oh, he's got a wet vacuum pump. Cool. Yeah. Very seldom fail. Yeah, it looks like it's all here. Oh, he's got the bellows exhaust. That's kind of a problem. On your side, you see underneath the heat shield back here, there should be a bellows looking thing. Where at? It's kind of hidden under the air filter can there. Um. I don't, I don't see what you're talking about. Oh, yeah. Oh, do they? Oh, they cross this over the front. Oh, okay, only on this side then. So what is it? Right over here. Just inboard of the oil filter. So this thing right here? I look underneath there. You see the little... All those? Yeah. Okay. A little corrugated looking thing. Uh, what can happen there is when the engine cranks up because of the way the mounts work, the engine can actually twist or torque. Right. And those bellows don't like being twisted. Okay. Being compressed like an accordion, that's great. So when you assemble these exhaust systems, there's a specific way to tighten this down so that it can move without overloading the bellows. Okay. The time right here, T410.4. 410 hours. I think that's, that's what good. the book said, is how many yeah. hours are on these, this engine. Really? Well, I doubt it's had that oil filter that long. <coughs> Do I? I would hope the oil filter's not that old. Well, could be. It could have like 800 hours on it. 
<laughs> if I remember correctly, it's a 1200-hour TBO. Yeah. As I recall. Yes, sir. So there's a TSO 520-C7 parentheses. Okay, you have to watch it on the C model engines had an AD note about cylinder heads leaving the barrels. Oh, that's good. Experimentals did that twice. Fortunately, before you do, uh, you start getting oil between the head and the barrel. And on the Experimentals airplane, you look straight down and see that the fins mm -hmm. don't line up. Oh. So. so it would split right here. Yeah. Right there. Standard deal. Heads and are aluminum and that steel, they thread them together. Oh, gotcha. The web filters out the really big piece. Yes, yes it does. All right, let's go see if this spins. That is just as smooth and tight as can be. Yeah. End to end play is okay. Yeah. Radial isn't. Well, there's gonna be some. I mean, it, it's nice and tight and spins really freely. Oh, good. And nice looks really clean. There's no oil in it. Sweet. Yeah, that's why there's two P leads on this mag. One is advanced, one's retard. Yeah. The retard fires pretty much at top center, which is why if you have every light one of these <laughs> off, uh, when you get everything set up, primed and everything else, hit the starter button, it'll turn over. And once in a while, it'll kind of a little bit. And you say, oh, another, another turn or two and I'll get it. As long as the button's down, the engine can't start because this magneto shut off, the advanced points on this one are shut off, you're running on the retard points, the engine can't run on that. So a little bit of leap of faith there. Hit the starter button, when you can hear it begins to start to fire, let off the button. It goes full advance, you're on your way. That's the same thing that Aztec has on it. Yeah, it's the same thing. Shower of sparks sure, yeah. on it. And that stupid thing, every time I'd let go of it, then it would start. Then it would light, yeah. So yeah, it's a little bit of a trick huh. to get these things. I just have to ask later. Yeah. Okay. What do we got here? Have we got oil in it? We have oil, and it's not that dirty. Want to have a look? Oops, I'm gonna make there you go. Yeah, it's kind of black, but taste it. See what weight it is. We'll wait till later. Are they free? They should be. Yeah, it's real nice and. And remember, you're turning the crank faster than the prop, so it might take a little extra push That's compared true. to a direct drive. Ready to do the uh, calibrated compression check? <laughs> Let's see what we got. And we have mechanical leverage. Oh, there's one cylinder. Oh, that felt. All right. Oh, here comes another one. Yep. Golly, that's okay. That went past. Yeah, this got compression on all of them. Oh, that's good. About the same. Golly, pretty good. And for Continental, <laughs> that's impressive. Yeah, it is. Yep. Good lord. Or we're just hydro-locking it. Hydro locking oil, oil or flirting with in it, there, yeah. yeah, something. Yeah, well, compression checks out good. Okay, where's the logbooks? That's right, annual, done, ready to fly. Oh, if we're gonna do that, I need these. Yeah, let's check the oil over here. Oh, it's dirty. I wanna get dirty. Then why did you get into this world? <laughs> Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Stay. Yes. Right there at the top. 13. Now, do you see anything that looks like metallic paint? No sparkles. That's what we like to see. Let it does it have down. a funny smell to it, though. Yeah. Did you smell the other one? No, I didn't. Smell this one. Is that age? That's what I'm wondering. It almost smells like bad gas or something. Yeah, it almost does. Well, it's gonna leave anyway before you go anywhere. Yeah. Gross. Got dirty. Okay, same thing here. That's actually nice and snug. Leaks, cracks, missing pieces. That's a patch, no big thing. Same here. Oh, Could use a little bit of air in the tires. Oh yeah, just a couple pounds. 
You got one of those uh, air pumps, like a bicycle. That's right. That's interesting. What you got? The exhaust is goldish colored. It well, only does that when it's new, and yeah. you run around it a little bit. Yeah. All the way across, and these two rows of rivets here, the center section spar rivets have been known to loosen up and start working. You'll get a black <clears throat> smudge blowing back. So kind black like streaks back are bad. See, like these guys are doing right here? Yeah. As it happens, that's just a fairing, really. So we're not going to worry about that a whole lot. Okay. It would be good to be redriven on that next annual when you're when next time you're in there. It's a little difficult to get at. Yeah. Get around. Yeah. It's a fairly heavy duty material. I was going to say it's like a forty or fifty thou. These are supposed to be structural screws, not not stainless like they are. Yeah. Alrighty. Is that what the wires are? Yeah. This is the sense antenna here, and I would I'd call this the loop. You have two of them, so you must have two ADFs. I would, I would imagine. This thing said something about radar on it too. Yeah, that should be up forward. Oh, that's that's why he's got the different nose. I, I noticed it's got a different nose. I almost said wrong. So oh, okay. That should be. Probably could use some tires. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so no, that'll be fuel selector. That's so. Uh, Which one? This one got here right here. Should be fuel selector. This so is you the can valve. drain. Mm -hmm. and that's just to turn the fuel selector, right? Yeah, I don't know why they have a cross thing like that, but uh, I'm kind of reluctant. Don't need fuel running down my arm, and secondly, if the O-rings get disturbed, sometimes they don't shut off right. on an airplane at this age that no one's really been doing anything. Yeah. So we can if you wish, but I would avoid it until we had a way to deal with it should it leak. Yeah, that's a good idea. These guys should have a little bit of play, which is acceptable. Not much in the way of oil leaks. This looks good. Now, you notice the stretch completely flat. Yeah. This is a good thing. Uh, sometimes when people park an airplane like this for an extended period of time, they leave the struts inflated. The uh, chrome is somewhat permeable. It can get moisture in there, and then the chrome begins to rust, and you get to replace the piston. Hmm. I've heard of people having it uh, re-hard chromed and repolished. I'm not sure about the FAA going with that or not. So if you know you're going to park it for a length of time on an airplane like this, Cherokee, whatever you use, this kind of struts, deflate it all the way down. That'll really? protect. That'll protect the... I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. You can inflate it later. A bottle of nitrogen is easy to get and cheap. Yeah. Compared to replacing the piston. Yeah, the tires got tons of time on them. They're not that badly cracked. Not that badly cracked. No, not really. There's some weathering on it, but it's not like you can see the cord. And they're mm -hmm. probably flyable. We'd have to turn it and have a look at the bottom, but yeah, it should be okay. You got tread all over the place. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It's just smooth as can be. I'm yeah. I am surprised. Everything of course is ball bearings, so yeah. It flies like that too. Oh, this is nice and pretty. Yeah. 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 Is nice. that the escape hatch? That is right here. Yes, yeah. Sir. Something you might want to consider. If you look at that, you see it. Did he silicone it? He siliconed it. Yeah. Okay, that's not good. No. I know what they're doing. They don't want it to leak. You have to replace the seal. Yeah. If you're in a real bad situation, and the silicone doesn't let go, things just got worse. Yep. Never, hey look at it, never seal those. What's the uh, the boomerang on top? Well that's the nav antenna. And For... then sometimes that's also the horizontal V part, this is the VOR receiver, there's usually a splitter, <clears throat> and then the vertical part on some of them is a comm antenna. Okay, that, and that's? That's gonna be comm too, and I assume that's, that's ELT. That's your ELT back there, yeah. What on earth? Get your camera over here. <laughs> what? That's the last inspector. That's... What? I think he's alive. Really? No. Yeah! He's stuck. He's asleep. Wake Can't up! Wake up. <laughs> or, when we were in there pulling on the yoke, oh, I anyway. smushed him. <laughs> that could be. Oh, okay. And meat on Poor a stick. Poor little guy. All right, start over. I was still thinking about the lizard. <laughs> Spar. Yep. Goes to the rear bulkhead. There's two bolts there. Roger. There's some more attached points back there. Yep. There's a torque. You take it to torque and everything is good. However, they've been known to loosen. And they make a snapping noise. The wrinkling noise you hear is oil canning. That's just the skin. So it'll make a loud snap if it's loose. Oh, you're cool. Or it breaks. Or it's, you know, you can end up on the floor and then... <laughs> cool. 
assuming that the engines run good and that mm -hmm. they have compression and nothing funky in there, yeah. airplane-wise, this one kind of passes the, the sniff test, it yeah? It does, it does. Yep, I would say it does. Okay. Obviously a ferry permit. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And in order to fly this, we'd want to put at least the two main tires on it. Because mm -hmm. that one over there is definitely completely toast. Yeah. I wouldn't even taxi with that one. Uh, then uh, put it up on jacks, do a couple of gear swings to make mm -hmm. sure the gears do what they're supposed to. The engines run those up a handful of times and do a few fast taxis, fly around over it a little bit, and then head on down the road. Now, if the gear gives you fits, there's an option of stiff leg in the airplane home. Sure. However, uh, I forget what gear speed is on this. Yeah. It may as well be a sky lane. So, yeah. That's right. And when you do bring it up on jacks, of course, lubricate and everything else. Well, yeah, that's assuming, yes. Assuming yeah, all that. the full, like, two gallons of lubrication <laughs> yeah. oil all over this thing. All that. Um, okay, well, let's take a peek at that engine because there was the hose laying on top. Mm -hmm. And let's just double check what needs okay. to be connected or what might it might need to be ready to ferry so I can get a ride home. <laughs> there is that. Let's go see what we got. 